Welcome back to Red Hawk Media. Today we're taking another look at After Effects, and this is what we're going to create. This is an animated lower third. Uh, we're going to learn about shapes. We're going to learn about some text, some 3D, and masking. And just some basic animation as well along the way. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go ahead and create a new composition here. And you can create your composition since this is an animated lower third. If you're working in a 1080p format or a 4K format, this would be the time to go ahead and set that up. I'm going to go ahead and keep it at 1080 just to keep the file size down. And we're going to go ahead and call this, instead of comp1, let's call it lower third and OK. So we've got our lower third comp. First thing that we're going to do is create a couple shapes in here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my shape tool. I'm going to go ahead and draw out a shape like so. Excellent. And then I'm going to add on some effects to this just to give it a little bit different look here. So um, I'm going to go in and I'm going to take the gradient um, ramp. Uh, yeah, let's do the gradient ramp. We'll add that on there. And I'm going to change up the colors here. First off, I'm going to change it so it's a radial, radial map. And I'm going to go to kind of a brighter red here. And then I'm going to go to a darker red here. This is feeling very Netflixy. Okay, and good. Let's take that lighter red and make sure that it's targeted right in the middle. There we go. That's kind of the idea. Um, and maybe a little bit lighter red. So we got that. Excellent. Let's go ahead and create a second shape. I'm going to take my first shape layer and I'm going to duplicate it. And then I'm just going to size it down here. So let's get to our select tool. Go ahead and slide, size this down a little bit. Then we'll move it down into the middle here. And now is a great time for us to give it a little bit different look. So I'm going to go with a four color gradient on this one. All right. And I can take off that gradient map that was on there because that's left over from what I duplicated before. I'm going to change these colors up. We're going to go with kind of a darker charcoal um, around the outside. And let's go a lighter charcoal. We'll move these around later here. Just picking a bunch of different colors out that are going to work. And then let's go with a darker one here too. And maybe like a light silver. All right. Now, anytime you click on these targets, you can move these around to different locations. So we can see like darker areas. Maybe right in the middle, we'll put a lighter area here. And then we've got a dark area over here on this side as well. And you can kind of contour this to whatever it is that you want to go with. Let's just go ahead and throw that one in the middle. All right, excellent. So probably could achieve this with the gradient map or ramp and put it to the radial setting here. But either way, we've got this all set up. We're going to go ahead and bump that over to make sure that it is, in fact, lined up with the other one here. So let's go ahead and go in there, move that, and we're just eyeballing it right now. We're not getting super specific. So we want these, if we take a look back at the previous one, um, let's go ahead and add on the rounded edges here. And then we can add on those drop shadows as well. And then, um, then we can look at actually creating a mask that's going to reveal these. Okay, so let's head back to this comp here. And let's start off with our overall shape up here. Um, at the top, when you've got that shape selected, there's an add feature up here. And there's a whole bunch of little goodies that are in here that we can go to. I'm going to go to rounded corners. Now, with the rounded corners on there, it's going to give me this down in my contents area underneath that shape. And I can drop this down, and I can adjust the radius of those rounded corners. And you can see how that's impacting my rectangle in the upper right there. Okay, and that looks pretty good. Not too bad. All right, now, uh, drop shadow. Let's go ahead and tackle that one. I'm going to go to shape layer 2, which is the center rectangle, and um, I'm going to add on a drop shadow. So I'm going to come over here and just start typing that into my effects, drop shadow, and let's drag that on there. All good. And I'm going to set this up. This is the direction that the sun is coming from. Let's set the distance up here. Let's make this straight down because it's going to be a little weird if it's not showing up consistently across the whole bottom. And we will also take the opacity of this down a little bit so it's not quite so obnoxious here. Just very subtle kind of in the background. Um, and there we go. That's a little bit closer to what we're looking for. 
not bad. So now, uh, next thing, uh, we might as well throw this in there as well at the same exact time. Uh, we'll put our text in there. We'll put in a main title. Um, I can right click down here and go, new, go with the new text layer. And then I'll say main title in here. Ooh, I've got some sassy text down there from the last time I was doing this. Um, We'll put that out there. If you want to adjust the font, go for it. I am going to adjust the colors here. Let's see what I went with on the first one. Uh, I went with like a black stroke weight with white. And then I, it looks like I've got a drop shadow on that as well. So let's head back here and let's make this text white. Okay. And the stroke weight we're going to make black. So let's click on that color there. There we go, and then OK, and uh, let's go ahead and size this down a little bit so it's going to fit into our area. There we go, not too shabby. This is coming together pretty quickly here. Now that stroke weight is a little obnoxious, so I'm going to take that down a few pixels. There we go. And then while we're at it here, we'll go ahead and just add that drop shadow on too. So I'm going to click off of there. I'm going to go over to my effects. Now, if you lose your effects area, there's lots of tabs that are going on here. You can drag these around, but there's that little drop down arrow. Let's go ahead and go in there. There's my drop shadow from the last time I searched it. Add it right onto the title here. And that looks pretty good. Same settings as what we had before. Let's put this straight down. Let's make the distance a little bit more. And then take that opacity down. So again, it's not so obnoxious. There we go, perfect. So now let's go ahead and get to the, uh, the tricky parts here. We're gonna go to the first shape. We'll begin with that. What we wanna create is we wanna create a mask, which is gonna be rectangular in shape. And this mask is going to expand across the length of the rectangle and it's going to reveal it actually. So if we go back here and take a look at this, we've got a rectangle that's off to the side here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and redrop this down so we can see our mask. Here's the mask. You can see there's the rectangle and all that. You can tell I added it after it, I made it or before I made it 3D. Um, so we'll get to that in a little bit. But um, that's what we're going to do next. So let's go ahead and get our pen tool. And once the pen tool is selected, up top, because we're working with the shape, we're going to go ahead and click on the tool that creates a mask. And now uh, all we're going to do is draw a quick rectangle off to the side here. And I'm going to connect this up in a full path. You can see my red background rectangle disappears. Uh, that's because the mask is not revealing it. It is hiding it. It's not showing it. Okay, let's go ahead and make that uh, make that happen though. I'm going to drop down the shape layer now. So we're going to twirl this down. Let me scroll down here so you can see what's going on here. And I'm going to go to my mask, drop that down. You can see I've got one mask on my shape layer. So drop that down. And if you've ever worked with lightsabers in After Effects, this is a very similar process. I'm going to uh, stop watch the mask path, and then I'm going to make this expand over time here. So I'm at zero frames right now. Let's go ahead and say that this whole animation is going to take like a whopping, you know, second and a half. Let's go to, let's see, I'm at 30 frames per second. We'll go up to roughly 15. There we go. And now I'm going to get my select tool, click in the middle of the mask, and let's create that second keyframe here by dragging this over, making a change to the mask path. And there it is. So now I've got a really simple animation that reveals that rounded rectangle in the background. Now, if I want to like kind of make this consistent between the first shape and the second shape and maybe even my text here, I can do a whole bunch of copy and paste at this point. Okay, so I can take my mask one, I can copy it, command C, I can hop on over to my second shape layer, select that, let's go ahead and put this back to zero here. And I'm going to paste the mask onto that second one. So Command V. And there you go. You can see that now both of them are disappeared. And as I expand this, they both reveal at the same exact time. Now, I might want the timing on my title to be a little bit different. So I'm going to do this process one more time on the title, but I'm not going to paste it on there. I'm going to create a new mask. 
So with my main title layer selected, let's go ahead and put this back to zero. I'm going to grab the pen tool again. And this time, because it's not a shape, you can see I don't have that option up here to click on that. I'm going to go ahead and create a mask off to the side. And just big enough to cover the text. And there it is. Text is gone. Same thing. I'm going to twirl down my layers here. Let's go ahead and expand this. We've got our mask. There's mask one. Let's check the mask path. There's my first keyframe. And now let's expand that mask path. We'll click in there with the select tool. I'm going to go ahead and put that out. And there we go. Now, if I put this at an angle like this, it will actually reveal like that all the way across, I believe. Okay. Uh, and you know what? I made kind of an error. I did not advance the uh, did not advance the playhead. So let's go ahead and move these back. And if I want, actually, I can do this. I'll just move the playhead forward here to the point. Uh, let's see here. This is going to come on a little bit later, I think. We'll go up to two seconds here. And um, we're going to go ahead and hit the uh, keyframe button to create this first. I'm now working in reverse. So I'm going to go back to the first frame, click in here, change this back. And I think I'm going to keep this on an angle so it wipes across at an angle the whole way, kind of like this. And there, oh, there we go. That follows the italics and everything. That's kind of nice. So we've got the rectangles coming out first. We've got the text following shortly after. And yeah, I probably will want to change that to right about in here. So I'm dragging my keyframe just to kind of manipulate the timing a little bit. Oh, there we are. Nice. Now, we're looking pretty good here. Um, I've got some extra images here that I'm using in my class. Uh, I've got all these logos that pertain to our school. It's just a Photoshop document. I'm just bringing this in as kind of a logo logo placeholder on the lower third here. Um, if you look back to the original one, let's get that out there. You can see that I brought that head in there, and then it just rotates in, transforms, um, and all of that stuff. And it's, it's not even a 3D layer or anything um, the way that it comes in there. So um, I'm going to add that on before I start working on the 3D stuff. Let's go ahead and decide. Let's put this back here. I want to see all of it so I can line this up. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my project tab. Uh, we'll grab that Red Hawk logos composition here. That's what happens when you drag in a Photoshop document. It creates a comp. Um, I can go and add that in here above my main title. And there's the hawk that I've got. And that's the only layer that's selected in that comp right now. If you go back, you can see there's a lot of layers, but only that hawk layer is actually selected. So lower third, let's go ahead and scale this down so it's going to fit in there. And then we're going to go ahead and drag that into place. And let's say something like this, you know, where it's kind of overlapping, maybe a little bit bigger here. You can make up your mind what you want to do with this. It's kind of a kind of a nice little extra layer that's in here. Yeah. All right. Maybe I want that underneath my title. And no, I'll keep it over the top here. There we go. It's only blocking a little bit of the E. We're good. So uh, now I've got that in there. Uh, let's do some basic animation with this. And the animation isn't going to start until actually things are animated out here. So I'm going to say right about there where the everything is wrapping up with the reveal of the rectangles. I'm going to put the playhead there. I'm going to go to my scale, which I currently have up. If you didn't see that, go ahead and hit S. And then scale will show up down here for your logos. I'm going to put it down to zero. Let's stopwatch it first. Let's set it down to zero. Boom. Okay. And then um, I'm going to move forward just a little bit in time because I want this to show up pretty quickly. And I'm going to scale it up to 100%. Uh, let's get that back down to the size that we want it here, right about in there. Perfect. Okay. And now um, I'm going to also, at the same time, let's add a rotate in here. So I'm going to click R for rotation. And you can see that pops up down here in my layers. Okay. There's my rotation. Right now it's got zero revolutions and zero degrees of rotation. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and add that on there. Let's, uh, let's drop this all down so I can see my previous keyframes. And I'm going to hold Shift 
just to go back to that first keyframe. When you hold shift, it kind of snaps right to the keyframes for you, which is nice. And we'll say stopwatch and rotation. And then let's go forward in time. Again, I'm going to hold shift and then go forward in time. Let's have it just do one full turn. So I'm going to type in here one because sometimes it gets a little crazy with the slider there. And uh, let's see what happens here. Oh, that was quick. Really quick. Let's spread that out a little bit more here. And that is not rotating for anything, is it? <laughs> Beautiful. Let's take a look at what... Oh, no, it is rotating. It's just happening so quick. Oh, I dragged out my scale, not my rotation. That kind of helps here. There we go. We got it all set. So now it's rotating in. Okay, not too shabby. All right, and then that comes out to the title. Let's say that the scaling and the rotation are wrapping up just a little bit before the title is done there. So then it's like, oh, boom. All animation completes at this point. Let's drag it out here. Nice. Okay, and you can mess around with the timing to match up with whatever you've got going on here for your title. So um, now we've got all that set, which is great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and now um, take some of these layers and give them that 3D effect. So you can see in the original one here, they're all rotated on the x-axis. And then as it, uh, as it reveals here with the uh, mask, it then rotates up. And then the subtitle kind of uh, fades into view at that point. Okay, so let's uh, let's see if we can get that happening here. Uh, we need to make a couple of these shape layers uh, 3D. And uh, did I have my title 3D? Let's take a look back at that as well. Nope, the title is up. I kind of like that actually. I'm going to keep that the same. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take those 3D layers and let me show you this down here so we can see what we're looking at. Shape layer one, we're going to make that 3D. We're going to make this 3D. And if you've been working on 3D before and after effects, we will also make sure that it's just on classic 3D. All we need to do is be able to rotate things on the different axes and we'll be all fine. I'm going to go to shape layer one. Um, and before I get going on this, actually, and even before I make this 3D, let's go back. I want to change up my anchor point here. Here is my overall shape, and you can see my anchor point is way up here. All right, I want to take that with the anchor point move tool, okay, and I want to move that smack dab into the middle, like so. Let's do that on shape 2 as well. Put that into the middle of shape 2. There we go, uh, roughly. All right, and now let's go ahead and make those 3D layers. All right, and you can see now that my directional thing is all set up in the middle there, which is great. Shape layer one, let's go ahead and at zero frames, let's rotate this. Now, let's go ahead and do this at the same time. Let's go to shift click on both of our layers, and then we're going to rotate both of them. Now, um, the rotation it needs to be stopwatch here, so we're going to go ahead and twirl these down. We don't need our mask right now, so I'm going to just condense that. I'm going to go to my transform, and what I want to do is I want to stopwatch the orientation here, and uh, that should be set for both of them now. All right, we'll take this. Uh, it helps if I have my select tool, and we will rotate both of them simultaneously till they're almost flat. We want to see just a little bit of that strip there. Um, and now what we've got is we've got a reveal that looks like this. Now, uh, as this goes, it's going to eventually rotate up. Now, I don't want it to start rotating right away. I'd, I want it to at least get three quarters of the way here full before it starts the rotation. So I'm gonna go ahead and with my playhead right out here for the orientation, I'm gonna click another keyframe, which means that there's no change between these two keyframes. It stays the course here. And now from this keyframe to, let's say, right about here, just before the hawk starts showing up here, we're gonna have it rotate up. So I'm gonna go back up here, I'm gonna grab my x-axis and we'll rotate it back up and it should technically be at zero degrees so I'm going to type that back in there zero degrees enter and there we go let's see what this looks like it reveals in we got the text coming in and then we've got it actually coming up here and then the rest of the text comes in while that's going 
Not too shabby here. Not too shabby. Okay. There's a weird moment where, oh, it, it's not actually blocking. It's just the way that it's masking on there. I might have the title go a little bit faster because it'd be cool if it's there ahead of time. And these are the little tweaks that you can go ahead and make along the way here. But now at this point, I've got two shapes rotating in 3D space. I've got a main title that actually gets revealed by a mask. I've got the hawk that actually twirls in on a rotation and scales up simultaneously. That is a pretty good start to some basic skills here for creating a lower third. Now, um, it looks like right now that this is going to be a black background. I can go ahead and click on the uh, checkerboard here. Before we export uh, we've got all this extra time that we don't really need for this. Now, the, it's going to animate in, and then it's going to stay there for a little while. So let's say the animation, let's see where that actually ends. It gets to about two seconds. It's done animating. And then we've got about another two seconds that it's going to be on screen, roughly, so people have enough time to actually read it. And then if they want, they can actually cut that down. So let's go ahead and put it to five seconds. And then if you want, you can trim that down in your editor later um, when you're using this. And uh, there we go. Let's trim our whole comp to match our work area. So trim comp to work area. And there we go. Now we've got just that five seconds in here. Much better. Now I can go ahead and go through that process of exporting. I'd file, always get in the habit of saving at first, and then file, export, add it to the render queue. We're going to make those changes. Uh, again, it can't be an H.264. It's got to be a quick time uh, because we want to get to this option right here, RGB plus alpha, which isn't available on H.264. And now I go ahead and click OK, and let's render this. And uh, so let me move it over. It, yep, that's because I did this before. And da ding, there we go. We're all set. It is exported. I will now on my desktop have that video and it will look exactly like what we have here. Um, I didn't add on that second title to fade that in, but I think you can handle that based off of what we did with animating the hawk and that. You can uh, animate some opacity on your on your own but you've got a great set of skills here to work with um, you created some shapes rounded some edges added some drop shadows uh, we revealed stuff with the mask and then we rotated things on the in 3d space um, and uh, yeah you've got a pretty nice looking lower third out of the deal well I hope you enjoyed this and picked up a few tips and tricks along the way here um, thanks for joining us for another episode of Red Hawk Media